there are so many layers and levels and this whole conversation is nuanced and we would be on here for 15 hours if we were tr to truly unpack all of it. But I'm going to start with sharing that most men do not feel safe enough to fully open up to their feminine partners. So I'm just going to put that there. Um, what I want you to know is that, is that I am also aware that there are lots of women, Western women, who identify in a similar way. That was my silent shots fired. Uh, this transmission is called Why He Won't Open Up to You. This is specifically for the ladies, although I believe the gentlemen um, and those who are gender fluid will all receive value from this conversation. Um, I want to start by saying what I'm about to share is not an attack on the feminine that occupies feminine bodies. It is uh, meant to be a window into a, a perspective that a lot of men hold uh, and are afraid to share with you. Um, there are so many layers and levels and this whole conversation is nuanced and we would be on here for 15 hours if we were tr to truly unpack all of it. But I'm going to start with sharing that most men do not feel safe enough to fully open up to their feminine partners. So I'm just going to put that there. Um, what I want you to know is that, is that I am also aware that there are lots of women, Western women, who identify in a similar way, uh, who would say, I don't feel safe to open up to my partner uh, because of X, Y, and or Z. Right? So I just want you to know that I get that this is a two-sided or there's many sides to this conversation and a part of what I'm bringing in here, hold on one second, um, and avoidant, there we go, it's already happening. Uh, I need some advice on how to handle avoidant behavior, saying he will give me something but not being there in the moment. Yes, this is exactly what I'm speaking to on so many layers and levels. So uh, I'm going to give you a little back story. Um, number one, um, I grew up with a beautiful, well-meaning powerhouse mother uh, who happens to be a, an extreme Virgo. And uh, that mother because of some of the shortcomings of my father and her father mm, on both sides, um, had to pick up the slack and occupy both her feminine and her masculine, but mainly her masculine. And so this beautiful, well-meaning mother uh, did her absolute best to mm, teach out all of the things that she did not like about the masculine. Just drop a, I'm with you, or me, I'm here. If, you, if you're picking up and catching what I'm putting down. Um, so my mother did her best to educate me out of what she believed was bad about the masculine. What I received in my, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 year old consciousness was that when women are around, I am not safe. When women are around, I am on duty. When women are around, hmm, my needs don't matter. When women are around, I must shut down parts of myself. Okay. Okay, this is, we're going deep and, and I, I know you're following me and you're tracking. So that story, while it has so much more nuance to it, is not, that story is common, extremely common. And so 
what you're being with, ladies, when you're being with a man is not just you and him. You're being with that story. You're being with the somatic body. You're being with the trauma and the shame and the lack of openness and acceptance around his own genitals, let alone the rest of his masculine perspective. So when a man learns early, a boy learns early to apologize for his urge to merge, when he learns early that his masculine ways, that primal aspect of him, that reptilian uh, crocodile brain aspect of him, when that comes forward and it's met with the idea that this is clean and safe and this is bad and wrong, he at some point is going to start to pick it up and catch it and create boundaries between him and the said perpetrator. There are conversations that occur with, uh, in, in men's groups about how good it feels to be able to put something in the space and not have to uh, handle and hold the, the, the um, onslaught of emotions and feelings that come from uh, typically a female partner that doesn't feel safe. Now, uh, one of the things I'm learning and, and working with myself is the distinction between primary and secondary emotions. I'm gonna say it again, and please just drop a me and hearts in the comments if this is landing and resonating. And if you want, tag your partner, tag your friend, okay? So there are primary emotions and there are secondary emotions. Most of us try to um, get our needs met with secondary emotions. So what that looks like is, is I will speak at, not from, from is vulnerable. At is safer. But what's under it all is a scared person who just wants to feel uh, accepted for who they are. Mm. So when particularly men and women are in relationships with each other and um, Let's use the woman, for example. She comes to her partner with a secondary emotion. Now, pr the primary emotion is, I am scared. I am sad. I am feeling sadness, fear, anger. I am feeling rejected. I need, desire you to give me reassurance about our bond, our partnership, our love. That's the primary. But what she brings, if she brings this, is, is the secondary, which is, I saw you like that picture on Instagram. Is that, is that what you like? Is that what you want? You want some hussy skank on Instagram? Is that the kind of guy you are? Is that who I'm dealing with? Mm. Somebody's gonna catch this and it's gonna transform your relationship. What she desires most is connection. But in the moment that she's sharing, what she's sharing, where she's sharing from is secondary emotions. Therefore, it creates uh, a wall, not a bridge. It builds a wall, not a bridge. It's scary and feels unsafe to lean into and say, I noticed that you liked a picture. The story I made up about you liking that picture is all kinds of craziness. I don't even wanna get into the story. What I wanna share with you is that I'm feeling really scared and nervous about our connection. Can you please reassure me? Can you tell me that you wanna be with me, that you love me, that you will take care of me, that X, Y, and Z. What that does for a man, ladies, hear me loud and clear, what it does for a man is take him out of defense about his choices because he can like a picture. He's a sovereign being who can like a picture. You guys can create um, a agreement that works for both of you, but you don't get to dictate what the relationship is based on your wounds. Mm, somebody's going to hear this. So you build a bridge when you ask for his help, because that's truly what you want. 
It's what you actually desire, you're just afraid to say it. Because, ooh, watch this, type me in the comments. I'm about to get deep and I'm about to make this hurt, but in a beautiful way. Type me in the comments if you grew up, ladies, in a Western culture, hearing from your mom, never depend on a man. Me in the comments. If you heard directly and indirectly, never depend on a man. If you saw at some level, this shit's so deep. If, if you saw at some level that behavior, I guarantee you, you are, you are enacting it right now. Because never, never depend on a man isn't just financially. It's not just money. Never depend on a man is also emotional. So you, you, you desire a thing from your man, but then you're, when it comes out, when it comes forward, I'm not saying you're doing this on purpose. I'm not saying you're actually trying to hurt or cause distance between you and your partner. And like I said, I will reiterate, this goes both ways. When I hear women talk about their men, their husbands, it's, it's like, oh, he's just not emotionally safe. He's not just this. He's avoidant. He's X, Y, and Z. Well, that pursuer and that avoidant personality, those, they, that can, be, can become secure when we start to guard each other's nervous system. Now, what does it mean to guard the gates and to, to do your best to protect someone's nervous system? Well, find out how he was wounded and ask yourself is when you share, are you adding to the wounds? because you're trying to get the need met from the secondary emotion because you're afraid to just be vulnerable. Which brings me to the last part. There are four aspects of what it means to trust another being. Four. The first one is sincerity. If you don't have sincerity, you have nothing. The second one is care. Does this person care about me? The third one is reliability. Will this person show up for me in when I need them? And the fourth, is um, competence. Is this person competent at the job that I'm asking them to do? So just going back to the, to the premise of this talk, the reason why your man won't slash hasn't slash has a hard time breaking down, opening up to you is because he somewhere in his subconscious does not believe that you are competent enough to hold his feelings without blaming him for the breakdown. So much here. I'm gonna save this on my page. The moment I save it, at somebody and then share it to your stories. I love you all. I hope that this produced value. Uh, there's a lot here and um, at the end of the day, we all just want to be together, right? We all just want to come together. Uh, for any of you who would like to work with me deeply over the next four months, I literally have 10 spots left in Stretch 22. Uh, so we um, basically filled up. We always sell out. This is the only chance you will get this year in 2022. Only chance you will get in 2022 to work with me directly. So I'm going to drop this. It's also in my bio. Um, it's PrestonSmiles.com forward slash stretch 22. PrestonSmiles.com forward slash stretch dash 22. The numbers. Um, there's so much to unpack in this. Competency is essentially, can somebody do the job? So I can trust that you're sincere. I can trust that you'll show up. I can trust that you care about me. But can you actually work on my car? Right? That, you're not competent to do that. Get it? Um, I love you all. Please, the moment I share this, go ahead and tag someone and then share it to your stories. Love you all.